Hey everyone, Sam here at Model Chili Scale Models, and here is Bandai's Razor Crest from The Mandalorian. And as you can see from the sides of the box, it's going to be quite a small scale kit, but Bandai being Bandai, it's still going to be packed with detail, and hopefully will build up to be a nice little model starship. And this is the silver plated version, so there's two versions of this kit, one with um, kind of a silver coating to all of the parts, and one which is just a dull grey colour. I've opted for the silver plated one, which was slightly more expensive, but I thought it'll uh, save me quite a bit of time trying to achieve the metallic finish. Right, so let's get stuck into it. So looking inside the box, you've got the instructions on the back side of the lid. And then we've got a couple of bags of sprues, so that you can see the metallic finish there. Here's the engine details. This kit doesn't come with any figures or landing gear that I can see, so it's just going to be a, an in-flight model with a um, painted cockpit. And there's some uh, stickers there for the um, for some of the painted details. I probably will be painting these instead of using stickers. These small kits don't tend to come with water slide decals anymore, which is a little bit disappointing. I would much rather prefer water slides to these um, sticky backed transfers, which are extremely thin, I will give them credit for that, but um, yeah, it's still nice just to have a real painted flat finish. And there's the basin stand. So the first step is I'm just going to cut out all of the parts from the sprue, clean them up, and then uh, just start assembling it all in one go. Alright, so I've removed all of the parts, and now to clean up, I'm just going to uh, finish off removing some of these nibs with their side cutters as much as I can. And then for some of these parts along the sides that are really difficult to remove, I'm just going to use a little sanding stick. Trying not to blemish the silver, the nice silver coating. So all of the parts have been cleaned up and Bandai has done a usual good job of hiding a lot of the sprue gates and you know, mold lines and parts that are going to be hidden once the kit's been put together. So uh, it's um, not going to be too much of a problem. However, there was a, just a couple of little places where I did end up sanding back the silver plating a little bit, just on the outside of these engine cowlings, along the edge there, which is going to be visible, and another little bit here. But they're very minor spots, and a little bit of silver paint will cover those up quite nicely. This is probably the biggest one right here on the edge of this, on the outside of this engine. So it's not a big problem, but um, yeah, just something to think about when you've got a, a kit like this where yeah, you can't really sand back the surface too much without getting rid of this special silver plating, which just reveals the, um, the grey plastic underneath. Right, so now it's time to uh, put everything together.
And just pausing a bit to uh, appreciate just how good these engine pods look. With the fine, crisp detail that's just packed in there. And the silver plating. I hope it comes across on camera, but um, in the hands it's just a, a marvel to behold, really. Uh, Bandai are well known for their um, incredible detail at such small scales, but um, this is really, really a step up from some of their previous kits. It just looks like this has taken hours to build. And really it's just a, was it four pieces put together? Yeah. If you can't tell, I'm impressed. Alright, so there it is, all done and dusted. Easy as really, it only took a few minutes. As you can see, it's a, a really simple construction. But man, does it look good. Alright, so next step, let's start painting. Okay, so to enhance the um, already silver plated ship, I've uh, busted out just about every single metallic colour that I've got in the Vallejo Model Air range. So I've got a uh, black that'll be used just for the cockpit windows. And then I've got gunmetal, aluminium, silver, chrome and steel. Now how much of a difference these different colours are going to make on such a small scale? Well you probably won't really be able to tell that much. But um, I just thought I'd use them anyway since I've got them. And I'll just paint around just various panels and little bits and pieces just to break up the, um, the kind of uniform colour of the ship. And then I've got uh, bright brass, copper and metallic rust. Um, for the some of the engine details and a little bit of weathering here and there. And yeah, so we'll see how that goes. And I'm just going to be painting straight onto the plastic, so I'm not going to be doing any priming or anything because that will just uh, cover up the metallic finish, which was the whole reason I bought this version of the kit. This uh, silver plating is kind of a little bit slippery, so it will take quite a few layers of brush painting just to get it to build up to a nice even coat. At the moment the paint's just kind of sliding around, so I'm not too worried about how bad it looks at the moment. I'll just gradually build up some thin layers so we get a nice solid black in here. And so here's the panel painting progress so far. So what I've found is that a lot of the lighter metallic colours don't really stand out that much from the base metallic plating. So there's a few panels here that I've done in silver and aluminium and chrome. Really all they've done is just change the um, reflectiveness of the um, surface. So it kind of works in that regard. So there's a little silver panel here that you can see it doesn't reflect as much. But when you look at it straight on, you can't really see any difference in colour. So it's kind of a, uh, 
a nice paint to use for that sort of effect. But the one I found most effective is the um, the gunmetal colour. So that's just a different shade of silver, which I've used in quite a few panels around. They mostly show up when the light's not shining directly on it. And you can kind of see some different coloured panels there. And um, as I've been painting it, I've kept in mind some of the weathering techniques that I'm going to use. So inevitably when you're brushing with a paintbrush, you're going to get um, brush strokes. So I've kind of tried to keep those in the direction of weathering, either down or across the surface. And some of the edges aren't exactly sharp and neat. Because I kind of just want it to look like sort of distressed metal panels. So I've kept it um, a little rough in some places. Yeah, so that's the top done. And yeah, the cockpit section's almost done, just needs a couple of layers there. And then I'll move on to the rest of it. Alright, so with the panelling done, it's now time to paint on the kind of a yellowish brown pattern along the sides. And so instead of using this sticky transfer, which will go about here, I think, part of the model, I'm just going to paint this on. And for the colour, I've got a, a mix of three parts model air yellow ochre to one part olive drab. And I'm just going to brush paint on the lines straight onto the model and then um, clean it up and chip it away with a toothpick once it's dried. And so now I've got a very rough and kind of messy pattern there, but to clean it up I've just got a toothpick here. And so the advantage of this is that because I've painted it straight onto the plastic, I can easily just scrape away the paint to bring it back a little bit and straighten it up. Make some lines and then also use it to uh, create some chipping for the weathering process.
All right, so there's the markings painted. I think I did a, an okay job. It was quite difficult getting them lined up on each side, but it's mostly there. Um, this side is a lot more weathered. There, and this side a bit less so, but still quite chipped up. What I really like is just the um, the sort of matte finish of the yellow compared to the silver. Gives it a really nice finish there. Makes it look really painted on compared to the metal. So now I'm going to use the same toothpick, toothpick technique and I'm just going to scrape along some of the um, silver panels that I did just to get, indicate a bit of uh, weathering and distressed panelling. Not too much, just little scrapes here and there. Just to bang the ship up a little bit because it uh, certainly has its fair share of knocks and scrapes. Now I'm going to apply some dry brushing, so I've just got the um, gun metal that I used for some of the panels. So I'm just going to get that on the end of a flat brush and wipe away most of the paint. And just start dry brushing some of the detail across the surface of the ship. Don't want this to be too extreme. Okay, that's uh, very very subtle. I might need to do it. Uh, it's slightly thicker. I'll just do multiple layers. But yeah, um, thin layers of this paint really blend into the uh, metal paneling, so I have to do it a bit thicker than usual. Just to get a very subtle streaking effect going across the surface. Now it's time for some pin washes. So I've got a Vallejo model wash. I've got black, oiled earth and dark grey. I'm just going to use those in various parts of the ship just to bring out some of the detail. I'm not going to completely coat the model in wash. I just think the detail is a bit too fine for that and I risk just making the ship seem really small if I am. Um, especially if I do every single panel line with a wash. It can kind of create a weird scale and sort of shrink the ship down a little bit. It's kind of nice to uh, leave some of these panel lines as they are. And I'll just uh, use the wash, especially in the engines, and some of the deeper recessed detail.
So I used the uh, oiled earth wash to dab a few places on the underside just to indicate a bit of kind of greasy oily engine stains especially on all the lower parts where things would trip down when the ships landed for extended periods of time and also along the bottom there where it's going to get close contact with the ground and as you can see it's kind of left hard edges around where it's pulled but uh, an easy way to clean that up is just to get a cotton swab and just a tiny bit of acrylic thinner you could use water but uh, this really gets the job done a lot easier and then um, just gently go around the edges and just kind of make the lines a little less, less harsh just kind of muck it up a little bit more So it just creates more uh, smaller patches rather than one big patch. And just applying the same wash around the engines again just to um, give it a little bit of a dirty greasy look it's quite subtle so I'm just kind of gradually building it up over time different layers different sections And using the same wash for the side, I'm going to pull it up in certain areas along where the hull meets the uh, pylons. And then as it's drying, just kind of drag it down just to create a little bit of weather streaking. Because the Millennium Falcon has lots of streaking done by gravity, so why not this one too? Now with a bit of acrylic thinner on the end of a brush, I can take this wash that's dried and pull it and push it in all the different directions to create a bit of streaking. Now I'm going to repeat the same process, just using the dark grey wash to create a few more stronger streaks, especially around the engine. So I want some streaks pushing back along the uh, cowling there, so I'm just going to dab on some spots of dark grey wash and then pull it back once it's mostly dry.
And now with a small old brush that's kind of a bit frayed, I've just got a tiny little bit of black paint on the end. Wipe some of it off and then I'm just going to dab around some little black specks around the ship. Just a bit more weathering. And to protect the paint on the cockpit and give it a nice shiny finish, I'm going to use this Vallejo gloss varnish. Now with a tiny bit of the aluminium silvery colour on the end of a bit of sponge, I'm just going to uh, dab that around the ship just to create a few little silvery marks here and there. And now finally I'm going to add just the tiniest little bit of Vallejo Model Wash Rust just in some really small areas. Because there are rusty parts on the ship but it's not overwhelmingly rusty. And so here it is all finished up. I uh, just did a couple more finishing touches, which included adding a couple of uh, red lights to the front there, and just a uh, brass little rim around the front of each engine. And uh, overall it only took a few hours from start to finish. As you saw, the construction was really basic. And then uh, the rest was just a bit of uh, brush painting. So I didn't use any airbrushing, I didn't use any spray cans. Uh, so it doesn't have a clear coat over the top. And the reason is I just really wanted to keep just how awesome the silver finish looks from the plastic. So I didn't want to um, diminish that with a clear coat, either a gloss or a semi-gloss or a matte. would definitely change up and make everything kind of all blend into one layer. And I really like how the different layers of paint and the silver plating of the plastic really have different uh, levels of reflectiveness. Makes it look really interesting as you're rotating the model around different light sources. And yeah, so uh, another outstanding job by Bandai. This was a really fun kit to build. And uh, as you saw, goes together really quickly. And uh, yeah, I wish the price was just a little bit cheaper. This was quite expensive. Um, I found it in a local hobby store, but um, importing fees and taxes and all that, it was around about 50 NZD which is uh, quite a lot of money for, especially the size, compared to some other uh, model kits of late. But um, yeah, I'm still glad I bought it. I'm glad I took the plunge. I have been kind of after one for a while, but um, yeah, just trying to find one online well, has been quite difficult. But yeah, one finally turned up and uh, yeah, I just had to get it. So I hope you've enjoyed the uh, the video and I hope you like the final result. So. As always, I'm keen to know what you guys think, so please leave a comment below if you've got any questions. Well, I'll do my best to answer them. And um, yeah, thanks for watching. So let's have a look at this alongside some uh, other of my Star Wars miniature builds. Alright, so there it is next to some of my other previous Bandai miniature builds. 
And as you can see, it's a very similar size to all of the other kits. Um, it felt a little bit big when I was building it, but um, yeah, now that it's next to all of the others, you can really see it. Uh, it really is a similar size and um, in bulk at least, if not length. And yes, yeah, so these Bandai miniature kits are really fun to put together, go together really quickly, and make a nice little collection once you start building them up. There's a few more I've got my eye on, but uh, I hope Bandai keep releasing these because um, yeah, they're a nice little addition to any model collection and a nice little palette cleanser between really big builds if you just want to knock something out really quick and easy. Then uh, these bond these kits you can. Um, just put together and do a minimal job and they still look really good or you can just spend a few more hours on them and really detail them up. Either way, I still think they look pretty good. Alright, so that wraps up this video and a big thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this content and uh, want to see more builds in the future, particularly Mandalorian builds, hint hint, then uh, make sure to subscribe and uh, yeah, keep an eye out for any videos coming in the near future. So until next time, this is the way.